Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm starting the 30 day coloring challenge, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do Bible art journaling. I have been wanting to test out mediums in my Bible for a long time, and this month is going to be my excuse to do it. I'm just going to do, even if it's just a little tiny bit, a little tiny drawing or something, or a little stamping in my Bible, I want to just do something every day. So I'm going to post them on Instagram. This is the only one that's going to be on YouTube. And if you want to follow the journey on Instagram, you can do that. You can also follow me on Periscope because once in a while I will do a Periscope. And if you have questions about what I've learned thus far, I'll see what I can do to answer some of those for you. And links for all that are in the description down below. I'm using my PH Martin's Hydrus watercolors. And these are a watercolor that I discovered did not go through the back of the page which I know is a really big deal for a lot of people. And it's a fairly big deal for me. I want to maintain the integrity of the word and be able to see the words that are on the page. I know some people have a separate journaling Bible like I do, and they figure it doesn't matter if you can't see it. For me, it does matter just because of the integrity of the word. I want to be able to have it be read by someone who looks at my art journal. I want them to be able to see the scripture and be able to read it while they're looking at the artwork. So I will be focusing on trying to figure out what kinds of mediums and styles and things that we can use in our Bible journaling. I know there's lots of people who have lots of information, so I'll be doing research as well. And I will do a summary video in March sometime, and I'll share what I've learned and some resources for you and some places that you can get some of the things that I find. So stay tuned for a big wrap up at that time. But I saw some people on Periscope who were painting flowers. They were doing these beautiful, whimsical, doodly flowers at the top of a Bible page. And I think they were going to do hashtag paint all the flowers. And so this is my attempt to paint all the flowers. What I decided to do was paint them first and add my linear doodling later. So I'm just really loosely painting on flowers, not getting really crazy with it. And you can see I can heat set in the middle. So I'm going to dry this and when I flip it over you'll see that the paint does not go through except for a little spot where the purple kind of leaked around the edge of the paper. So I'll clean off my mat and put it back down and add more flowers. The Hydra's watercolors don't lift so anything I paint layers on top of what's already there. So that's one of the fun things about them. You can start with really soft colors and then add bolder accents. There's lots of different things you can do. I'm staying away from using the dark colors over top of the scriptures just because I want to make sure that the words can be read. But you can even use the dark colors but with a really light wash and soften them out. So I'm adding more details to my flowers, just having a lot of fun painting beautiful, bright, cheerful flowers on this. The Bible that I'm using is one that I found on Amazon. It was very rare so Translate rare to expensive, and <laughs> the reason it was expensive is because it's a particular translation that my pastor uses, and I thought since I have a couple other translations, it would be interesting to have the one that the pastor likes, and I can follow along in that kind of a way with him, and it has lines down the side. There are some Bibles that don't have lines down the side, but if you look for note-taking Bibles or journaling Bibles, usually you can find one that has either more column space in the center or around the edges or down the sides, all different kinds of things with or without lines. So find one that works for you and just know that they're all going to be, for the most part, Bible paper. There are some books that they kind of have scriptures in them or they only have things printed on one side. Those I consider more of journals rather than an actual Bible. So you can get something like that. You can get even just a plain journal and journal your scriptures in there. You don't have to do it in a Bible. Just do it. <laughs> That's the only thing there is to it, is just to do it. But I wanted to do it on Bible paper. I thought that would be a really beautiful way to create a book where the Word of God comes alive. So I'm just adding a lot of beautiful greens in here before I get ready to start doing the journaling part, just making the leaves so they, the whole cascade of flowers just comes down from the top of the page. Now, all watercolor basically is going to wrinkle paper. That's just what happens. So don't look for mediums that aren't going to wrinkle your paper if you add any water. So what I do is take two pieces of cardstock 
put one on the bottom and one on the top and slap an iron on that baby. I put it on full strength and just for, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, flatten that sucker out perfectly. It works really, really well. And you can do this with most watercolors. If you have watercolors that have mica in them, any kind of thing that shimmers, just know that it might stick to that top sheet because that mica will melt. So you'll either want to use a lower heat setting, I guess, or you can try just doing it a little bit less and, or maybe even just do it from the backside so less of the heat gets onto the mica. Not sure how exactly to solve that, but just be careful if you have shiny things on your page or if you're using shiny inks. So that's why I decided I would go ahead and do the ironing before the pen work. So I'm using the Illustrated Faith pen that they sell and going around the edges of my flowers. This allows me to make my whimsical doodling either match or not match my painting. I can make my lines go outside of it, I can make them go inside of it, I can scribble, I can make them loose. There's a ton of different things I can do now that I have my painting done. And I'm a little bit freer to be able to do crazy things with my drawing. If you've taken my whimsical sketching class, that's an opportunity to learn how to sketch and just get loose with things. And in that class, we're using the multi-liners and that sort of thing. So please don't take that class thinking that I tell you that a Sharpie is going to work in here because a Sharpie will definitely go through. So you want to experiment with some other pens. And as I said, next month, I'm going to have a big wrap up of all the things that I've learned. So I'll share the pens that I find that work. I'll be trying a lot of different stuff out, a lot of different paints and things, different coloring mediums, and let you know what I discover over time. So be sure to join me on Instagram and Periscope and back here on YouTube later on. So you want to be sure to subscribe and have the email sent to you so you can be the first to know when stuff comes out. So I'm going around my flowers. But some of them I'm going with just one layer around them and just loosely around the outside edge. Others kind of doubling up the lines just to make them looser and more whimsical. And it makes for a very nice pattern of flowers. So now I'm going to stamp. Neat and Tangle came out with some fun stamps, so I'm going to do, I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, and I'm going to use this secondary set along with some stuff that I got from my friends over at SRM Stickers. They've come out with some Bible-related things, and I thought I would use the Blessed stamp. So I'm going to use that in combination with some of the words from the Neat and Tangled set. And check that out. I took a piece of scratch paper and I stamped it out not in the colors that I'm going to use, but I stamped it out so I'd know what I'm doing and have a plan. And if I do any lettering in my Bible, I do that as well. I kind of sketch it out somewhere else so that I can plan where I want it on the page and what it's going to look like and have a little better idea what I'm doing. I'm stamping in Avriel pigment inks, and these seem to do pretty well as far as not bleeding through. Aside from a little bit of show through on the word blessed, I'll show you in just a few minutes. I think the reason is because it's a heavier stamp, meaning the lines are thicker. So on anything where you have thicker lines, I chose for this particular one, knowing that a little bit of that ink will show through, I chose a lighter color. If you want to use some darker colors, just use them in smaller areas and smaller stamps with thinner lines. So here's the finished page to which I will add a little journaling down there at the bottom things that God has blessed me with. But I wanted to show you also the back side of this. You can see the only purple came through was the stuff that bled around the top edge of the paper when I was painting. And a little tiny bit of the blessed seems to show through, but not very much. And that is because it's a heavier stamp. So just use some lighter colors and you'll be good to go. On this section here, it's nice that I can still read the words that are underneath. I was very excited that after it was all said and done and dried, I could still read the scriptures. And that is one of the things that was important to me. So here's a couple other videos. If you're interested in seeing some other stuff that I have done in the faith realm in particular, because I like to do some posts related to my faith. And if you'd like to see those, click on them. You can hit the subscribe button to get more videos from me. I put out three a week or thereabouts sometimes more if you're lucky. And I will see you out there on Instagram, Periscope, Patreon, all over the place. See you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.